Hi guys, Squirrel here. Welcome to another Train Sim World uh, video. This one is the uh, Northeast Corridor, the New York DLC, as it were. Head over to track four. So we're in New Rochelle, and we're going to be taking the Amtrak ACS, ACS 64 and driving over to New York Penn Station. And as you can see, the graphics are absolutely lovely. They're really nice. The graphics are like... Probably the best thing about this uh, this sim and this DLC. They are top draw. I wish there were more passengers and I wish there were actual vehicles on the road. Um, but, you know, maybe one day, eh? But in terms of the rendering, it's uh, it's stellar. Top draw stuff. I'm only getting about 50 FPS, though. Uh, I'm not getting a full 60, and that's on a clear day. Now, if I started to add some snow or rain or something, I suspect that might drop. So, I mean, I have got my settings up fairly high, but I've also got a 1080 Ti, so you kind of expect to be able to crank it up, right? Uh, reverse it to forward. There we go. Do the reverse it to forward. Uh, let's have a look at the lighting situation down there. Looks like the lights are already set. That's fine. Unlock the doors. We're on the left platform, so we'll do that. Um, so this is the console of the ACX, ACS64. Won't get much time to look at it, but you've got, like, the cab lights over here. Uh, you've got the desktop lighting over here, depending on what you want. Uh, pantograph, circuit breaker, and all that. Can't do anything with the display. Uh, can't do anything with that stuff. Then you've got the uh, reverser down here. You've got the master idle, the piece of B acknowledge type thing, the automatic brake. Um, so it has got like um, almost like an, like an engine retarder on it. So you've got engine braking, like that. Uh, over here is your lighting, so your front headlights, your ditch lights is down there. Sander, horn, all that good stuff. Wipers. Let me open the window. Get better acoustics that way. Right, let's release the brake. Bottom right, brake pressure coming down. There we go. So, speed limit currently. Um, well, the speed limit currently is 70, but the speed limit's 30, really. It's going to flick over in like 25 yards, according to the information so we'll just crank it up to like 30 here so i thought we'd take this journey quickly to sort of um to have a look at the scenery really to see what kind of you know mapping and detail and that kind of thing is done i mean the, the train itself is um like i say it's very very good very very detailed um that's definitely the best part of these sims 25 pounds for dlc uh that's that's pretty pricey the format of the dlc is well, it's more or less the same, it seems. The, this, the Train Sim World DLC format seems to be very samey at the moment. You get, I think, seven scenarios. Uh, I think three of them are with the ACS-64, which is this train here, the passenger service, the Amtrak passenger train. And then the other four are in the, what's it called now, the CSX GP38, I think it is, the freight train. Let's put it on neutral. There's about four scenarios on the freight train. Uh, a lot of it is kind of shunting work. Um, and then, of course, you get the full timetable, and you can choose your weather and that kind of thing. I kind of miss, like, from Train Sim World, I miss the, um... <laughs> and there's good and bad in this. Every DLC in Train Sim World was different, which means you never really knew what you was going to get, and that meant that some of the DLC was fantastic, and you got great scenarios, and an authentic train, and, you know, great acoustics and all that kind of thing, and, and detail controls, particularly the third-party stuff. Um, you used to be able to get was was absolutely outstanding, but with uh, without you know without the consistency meant that sometimes you just got DLC which absolutely stank. It seems to me they've gone for a consistent approach, and what that means is I kind of know what I'm going to get. I'm going to get like one or two trains. I'm going to get some scenarios, and then I'm going to get a timetable. But equally, what's missing now is just the kind of sheer. I don't know the. You used to be able to get these scripted store, like scripted uh, scenarios that you could do with different levels of difficulty, and some of them will be quite challenging, and some of them will be quite easy, and you can get like star ratings and all. Like it's all gone; it's not there anymore. And I kind of want it back, you know. <laughs> kind of miss that. I wish I could take these graphics and and the original train sim scenario elements and put them together because uh, for me. The way the DLCs are structured at the moment, for me, it's a little bit um, just missing something, I guess, is, is the best phrase. 
And with all these wonderful graphics, I'm looking at the roads there and I'm not seeing much going on, you know? It's something like Ghost Town, just driving through a ghost town. I do like the fact that there's all these other trains coming the other way. I do like the full scenario, like the timetable. Like, it's great having an AI timetable running. Um, one day, one day, we've been promised MP, so that'd be nice. But I ain't gonna hold my breath, you know? They have no timetable for that. But anyway, in terms of the visual elements, uh, which is probably the best thing, it's just looking out the window here, it is gorgeous and i suspect if you travel on this line or have traveled on this line i suspect you'll be able to tell me that it's actually quite authentic i would not be surprised if they'd authentically modeled it but i digress uh i think the next one the next dlc that's due out for trains in world is i think it's the south south is it the south coast of england like devon or somewhere like that somerset something like this which you know i actually really look forward to I really, really, really hope they bring out a steam train in that one because it really needs a steam train in Trains in World. I would love to see how they've implemented that properly. Water could do with a bit of work. Looks a little bit artificial, doesn't it? But, you know, I, I'm just picking holes. But then, that, I, I kind of see that as what I need to do, you know? I kind of see we need to take apart these DLCs and these trains and what the heck is going on with the graphics? That's some pretty weird thing going on there. I'm getting lines coming out the side of my train. Look. <laughs> oh, that's real? That's all? I don't even know what that is. Hang on. I'm speeding. <laughs> well, that's new. I've never seen that before. My cables were, like, sticking out massively then. That was really strange. But yeah, I kind of think that um, we need to take these things apart. We need to see what progress is being made. I'm really pleased with the uh, the rendering side of it. But um, as a player, as a player, it feels like it's lacking a little bit. Right, we've got the speed under control. There's not enough to do right now. You buy a DLC and it's not a cheap DLC. You buy it and, um, you know, you can play it for a few hours and then... I don't know, how much more do you go back to it? You're kind of just doing the same thing, up the same bit of track, and it gets a bit repetitive. What are your thoughts on that? Agree? Disagree? Gorgeous, though. It's absolutely beautiful. Hang on, let's get the, uh, the engine braking. See, when you bring the... Um when you bring the controller down, it puts a B next to it there, and then puts a percentage. And that gives you that sort of engine braking. It's it's pretty decent. It'll uh, it'll slow you down. It'll rush your speed pretty well. The braking on the Amtrak's is generally very, very good, the braking. The acceleration is a bit slow, but they can really stop, in my experience. I need to pay attention more to these speed limits. But in terms of, like, the building and stuff and all the um, the static scenery, they've really got that nailed, you know? It looks, it looks absolutely brilliant. I'm thinking they don't put AI traffic in there because I suspect it probably takes more frames. Is it on or off? Is it not off? Off. A little bit too bright with that on. Right, let's pay attention to speed limit 70. Uh, which one's going to be turned off here? Not that one. Oh, there's this point scoring thing. I forgot about that. Blimey. That's the speed limit change, which you can leave on or off. Stop location. We'll leave that off. We'll have it like that. Try and get a little bit of uh, artificial intelligence, but uh, artificial display, but not too much. In terms of the headlights, I mean, look at that. The lighting is pretty strong. that window interesting how when you open this one it's not doing so much now you did get an acoustic difference in the platform though like a big acoustic difference in the platform oh it's doing the weird thing again look what on earth is that has anybody else ever seen this this is so bizarre is that a new bug I've never seen that before. I mean, I've updated my NVIDIA driver, so I don't know what that's about. 
I wonder if one day we'll ever get to actually use these computer systems, you know? It's one of the things I do wonder. Like, will it ever step up to the level of a flight simulator where you can just access almost everything on the train like you can in a flight sim? Speaking of which, do you know they cancel the flights in world? Yep. Dovetail Games, who brought out flights in world, what, a couple of years ago? I remember doing a few videos on my channel when it came out. They've actually cancelled the project. Which I have to say, I am um, not entirely surprised about, really. It's clear that they want to focus on uh, on trains and stuff. Trains and fishing seems to be the thing, although I don't... I don't really agree with the whole fishing thing. Um, if I remember, the CEO quite likes fishing, and I think that's got something to do with it, but... Fishing Planet, I think, is a better product. At the moment, anyway. So maybe they're just going to focus on trains. Or maybe they've got another flight sim planned, who knows? They're just keeping shtum about it. That was always a thing, wasn't it? They were supposed to be bringing out some kind of updated version of uh, FSX. So, I don't know. I'll have to just pull the whole flights and pull out the market completely. It's a crowded place with P3D and uh, X-Plane in there, and then you've got uh, Aerofly coming up as well. Unlike train simulators, there are... There's not really enough of these, are there? If you think about it. You've got the original train sim, train sim world, then you've got trains, and then you've got run eight. And they're all very different, um, but you know you could probably say, well, if I could take, if I could take the realism out of Run Eight, if I could take the, uh, is it the MP side out of Trains? If I could take the graphics out of Train Sim, well, if you could like nitpick pieces, you could perhaps assemble yourself a really good Train Simulator. <laughs> but as it stands, as it stands, each one has got its own kind of shortcomings. This is this is nice. Look at this. They've even got all the. I wonder if that's the original graffiti as well. I wonder if you went there in real life, that's the graffiti you'd see. I do like seeing all the rolling stock parked up. It's amazing. 6.2 into New York Pen. If I remember New York Pen, um, I think you kind of go like underground into a tunnel and then you climb up to it. It's like a big gradient. I remember playing, I remember playing uh, the Amtrak Acela Express and I think that went out of New York Pen, back on the old train simulator. Look at that, what an absolute stunning view. That is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I just can't fault the Unreal rendering, but the detail modelling as well is uh, some fantastic scenery. Look at that. You're not going to see much better than that. It's a good job I'm not being scored on this because I'm doing absolutely terrible. I'm blowing loads of speed limits. I'm going under the speed limits, over the speed limit. Look, I've just done it again. I'm too busy just watching what's going on. I'm not even paying attention to the speed limits. I'm enjoying myself here. This is absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. Yeah, I recognise some of this, these landmarks from when I went to New York. I recognise that bridge. Oh, crikey, these speed limits are a bit irritating, actually. It keeps dropping to 45, then back up to 60, then back down to 45. This, um, this bit here... Maybe not the elevation, but... If you, if you sort of come into, um... Victoria Station in London, from the south side, it will bring you into this kind of suburban look, like this. And you'll see, like, Battersea Power Station and that kind of thing, and it's not too dissimilar from this, although this is a lot higher elevation than, um, than the London route. Most of the trains in London tend to run at ground level, they're not they haven't got purpose-built elevations like this. These have obviously been put on later. It's crazy. It's really high. I 
Absolutely stunning, though. So, I mean, in terms of value for money, they've certainly got the modelling right. They've obviously got a lot of artists and, you know, asset team and map modellers down there who are creating some amazing scenery. And the modellers on the, you know, the trains as well, they're creating amazing scenery. But I think, you know, for me, they need to focus on the overall gameplay a bit now and what the train simulator can deliver. And more importantly, they need to open this thing up because it's still doesn't have third-party support. You still can't build on this platform. And it still has no multiplayer element, which was promised from the get-go. Wow, it's beautiful. This would be a nice, a nice journey to take as a passenger. You know, it's very scenic. On a good day, obviously. Right, we've got a half percent incline going down. We've also got a yellow signal coming up at 1.7 miles. So I just need to pay a little bit of attention. Let's, um, let's keep it idle just for now. Yeah, that is, um... I mean, even just down there, you know. Even all the buildings and the cars and stuff. It's incredibly detailed. I know a lot of you guys like to sit first person all the way, but... I don't know. I, I'm kind of... I'm not the same. I kind of like to pop out and have a look around. I can understand wanting to say, I mean, it's the same in a plane when I fly a plane, you know, I I, I go third person and look around because the scenery is one of the most interesting things for me. Right, 0 0.8 miles, we've got a yellow signal coming up. So we'll just go idle on that until we figure out what the next signal is. It could just be a speed limit change or something. We've got a 0.7 gradient, so we just need to keep hold of that speed. Five hundred yards. Blimey, I'm struggling to even see the signal. There it is. You only see that when you're right on top of it. Breaking going. So now we're back at ground level, having taken all that elevated land, we kind of came back down. Oh, it slowed down again. It's really odd just looking out and seeing absolutely no cars, you know? Just nothing at all, just the occasional train. It's weird, it makes it feel like you're in one of those zombie movies. Four hundred yards. Green. New York Pen, four point three miles away. We're due in at 17.14, he's in 10 minutes. Now, I don't know if you saw or not, but that went to yellow, then quickly back to green, which means you were kind of possibly chasing a yellow light here. That detail, uh, is absolutely amazing. Whoever they've got doing these maps know what they're doing. I didn't actually try if I could do the um, blind, actually. There you go. That's pretty cool.
Quite a few tracks coming into here. Look at all this. Okay, we need to put some braking on because we're uh, we're picking up speed, going down a gradient again. Although when you look out the window, it doesn't really look like it. Point two, one point five percent. Wow, there's actually a car here on the end of this platform. Look at this. It's a static one, but it's a car. Right, this is the um, the gradient I was talking about. So now we're going into the tunnel. So we basically drop right down now. I never went to New York Penn. I went to Grand Central Station. That was pretty amazing. I remember watching a documentary on uh, on the Central Station and how it had just gone into a state of disrepair and then I think some... Uh, I can't remember how it was funded, but they they completely renovated it. it it fallen into awful state of disrepair and then it was renovated and they had to bring in granite from Italy not granite um, is it granite? yeah like granite slabs from Italy because that was where it was originally made they had to reopen a quarry where the, where the granite was taken from reopen it and get some more cuts and that was very expensive because the quarry was already flooded it was disused but they couldn't find any other way of matching the original uh granite tiling and stuff and then I remember I'm like oh the clock was all cleaned and renovated and the ceiling was covered in soot from the old days when it was all like steam engines coming through there and putting coal soot heck of a heck of a job but if you look at it now it's incredible this is a long tunnel Notice how there's a walkway on either side of the tunnel as well. In case it breaks down, people can actually get out and walk. It's a long walk though, isn't it, eh? <laughs> Blimey. I assume they've got some kind of rescue vehicles that can come and get people if need be. Because it's a bit of a drop off that ledge as well. I don't understand how it can show a light at the end of the tunnel when it's obviously just a black tunnel with lighting in it. Doesn't make any sense. Okay, we're climbing now, 1.5%. I assume it has to have gone under something, like it's gone under a river or under the water or something, because it, it went down quite a lot, now it's climbing back up quite a lot. Okay, let me just kill the throttle here because I can see things going on. Let me put the brake on. Yeah, I had a feeling that was about to slam dunk the speed. That was almost a derail. Blimey. That's what I didn't do. I didn't have that turned on. I should have had the speed limit warning turned on and I didn't. That's why I kept missing it. But yeah, here we are at New York Pen. I think you'll agree that it's um, scenery wise, it's absolutely spectacular. I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are on Train Sim World and and the current state of train simulators in terms of what what it is that you're what it is that you like and what it is that you feel is missing or is there another simulator that does it better 
like the whole run eight and trains and that kind of thing. Right, let's see if I can actually stop on the right place. I do like that. I like the way it shows you the place to stop. That's actually a really nice feature. Something all going off. Looks like they're, <laughs> they're not so much getting off, they're actually um, being squirted out, is what it looks like. Wait until 17, 14, 30. Okay, well, you know, if we have a quick look at the map. This is where we are now. That is here. New York Penny is here. I wish it put the label, but it doesn't. Um, but you can kind of see, I mean, I guess for your money, you're getting a lot of detailed track. Um, you know, but, but most of and this is common as well amongst the DLCs, most of it is like a single, almost a single line with, with little bits of branches going off, but not really going anywhere. But what's really missing is is scenarios to do things around this track. Like it would be better, you know, if there was, I don't know where this lot goes, but it would be better to keep some of that and maybe do more movement around like these yards. You can get just like shunting jobs, but there's not really many. Anyway, I take it you're supposed to turn your lights off when you're the driver. Like, I don't know. How does it work? You have to like dim your lights as you come into the platform, maybe. So you don't dazzle people. Or do you just turn them off? Let me know. Anyway, that, uh, that is the new Northeast Coda DLC for Trains in World. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Give you a little look at what's actually in the DLC. But do let me know your comments on, uh, on, this, on the state of train simulators at the moment. I would be interested to hear that. That's it for me. Until the next time, take care. Happy training.